This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this lecture is on uh, books of prime entry. So let me just spend a couple of minutes uh, explaining briefly what it is we're talking about. Uh, and then I'll explain in full by working through an example. Uh, but what it is, you'll remember from uh, the earlier chapter when we went through uh, double entry, uh, we went through all the debits and credits. So, for instance, um, buy, uh, pay electricity, credit, cash, debit, electricity. Buy goods on credit, debit, purchases, credit, payables, and so on. And that was all fine. We had our nominal ledger with all the T accounts in. Uh, but in practice, for a business of any size at all, it is all going to get a bit ridiculous. Because you'd be having thousands of transactions each day. And you can just imagine, you know, you pay electricity, so we turn to the cash page, credit cash, you turn to the electricity page, debit electricity. Uh, you buy goods on credit, off to purchases page, debit off to payables page, credit. And then perhaps two minutes later, more goods purchased on credit, back again to purchases, back again to payables. And the whole thing's going to get absolutely ridiculous. The, the book's going to get, the tier accounts will become completely full. Uh, you're going backwards and forwards, the book's going to start falling to pieces. And again, if you're going backwards and forwards through the book, um, it's no wonder, if you're doing things by hand, that people make mistakes. You know, you accidentally turn to the wrong page or make the wrong entry. Uh, and it, it, it all does uh, get rather impossible. And so what we do is, we don't change the debits credits, but we become slightly more efficient. Because of course, we only actually need the balances on the tier accounts for most businesses once a month. Because it's only once a month that they tend to prepare the statements. And so, although we need a record of every transaction, we have to make a record as soon as it happens. We don't actually need the debits credits until the end of the month. And so what we do is you'll see, we have a series of what you might call notebooks, where every time there's a transaction we'll make a note. No debits credits, just a note. And then later, usually at the end of the month, then We'll take the figures from the notebook and then we'll do the debits credits. Now it's much better seen by example, but these notebooks, uh, there are four main ones, as you'll see after, there can be more, it depends on the business. But the four main ones are as follows. A cash receipts book. In this book, uh, you can guess, we'll make a note every time we receive cash. Uh, similarly, we'll have a cash payments book. And again, it's usually a different bookkeeper that looks after this. But again, every time we pay any cash, we'll make a note. So that deals with cash receipts, cash payments. As far as purchases are on credit are concerned, we'll note them in another book. And here, the name can be very confusing. Um, it's either called the Purchases Journal or the other name is the Purchase Daybook. I'm sorry, a lot of this is terminology and I'll summarise the various books uh, at the end of the lecture. But rather importantly, Whatever its name is, Purchase Journal, Purchase Daybook, this lists purchases on credit. Only purchases on credit. Um, we may buy goods for cash, but then you pay in cash and it's listed in the cash payments book. The Purchases Journal, the Daybook, is only to make a note of purchases on credit. And finally, the main four, um, a sales journal or a sales day book.
But again, despite its name, uh, we don't list all sales here. We list sales on credit. Uh, now, there, there can be other books, and I'll mention a couple more later, but these certainly are the main four for any business. And let me, before I do any more talking, um, let me show you how we use these uh, with an illustration. There's an example on the third page of the notes. Uh, we're going to run through this uh, and show you how these books uh, are used and how eventually, ultimately, we do at the end, do the debits, credits. As always, I suggest you do it with me. If you do, then you'll need quite a few bits, blank pieces of paper. But whether you do or you don't, let's go through. Patty started business on the 1st of January 2008 as a trader in shares. She was busy buying and selling shares. Her transactions during the first month were as follows. There's a whole list there. Let's work through. And what might be a good idea is when we've done a few, and hopefully you're clear what's happening, then as always it might be a good idea if you pause the lecture and you finish them off, uh, and, and then carry on with the lecture and just check you finished them correctly. But anyway, that's up to you. Uh, but the first thing is, she paid 6000 into a separate bank account for the business. As always, we're writing up the books for the business, so the business has received 6000 um, If we receive cash, we record it in the cash receipts book. But as you'll see, there are actually several columns in this book. We have a column which says total. And the cash we've received, 6,000. Now we write something against it. Remember, this is only a notebook. There's no debits, there's no credits. It's a note. Um, and write against it whatever, in real life, whatever seems sensible. I don't know, it was Patty who paid in the money, I'll write Patty. And of course, every time we receive cash, it'll be listed in this book. Just one thing, though, later we are going to have to do the debits credits. We're not going to do it yet. We'll come back at the end of the month and we'll do the debits credits. And of course, we've received cash, so we'll debit the cash account. We'll credit the capital account. That is the owner. But the trouble is, although I know now today that's the entry I'm going to do later, when I come back at the end of the month and there have been thousands of receipts, I'll say, ah, we've had 6,000. The danger is we forget why. And so I don't forget. When we get the receipt, I enter 6,000, but we have what we call analysis columns. I'll have a, a column headed up capital, and I put 6,000 in that column as well. And so you'll see... Uh, Later in the exercise, when we do come back later to do the double entry, I know immediately why we received the 6,000, it was capital, and therefore I know what the double entry is going to be. And I'll have columns for each reason we receive cash. For instance, another reason for receiving cash is cash sales. So we'll have a column there, and as you'll see, if we do sell anything for cash, I'll enter the receipt in the total column. We'll analyse it. It was cash sales. I put it in the cash sales column. Anyway, we'll carry on. As we come to things, let's look at B. B, we buy chairs for 1600 cash. Well, of course, that's a payment of cash, so we'll record that in the cash payments book. And in a similar way, we'll have a total column. We've paid 1,600. I'll put against it chairs. But again, because there are lots of different reasons as we go through that we could be paying cash, 
I'll have analysis columns and I'll immediately also put it in a column for cash purchases. Remember, she buys and sells shares. So when we do come later to do the double entry, I'll print it cash. Oh, and I'll debit purchases. Next one. Uh, she sold some shares for 1200 cash. We've received cash. So the cash receipts book, 1200. Uh, we write what we like, doesn't matter. But while we received the cash, we saw good, it was cash sales. So I'll put 1200 in that column so we don't forget what the reason was. D, we buy a van for two and a half thousand cash payments. 2,500 in the uh, total column. Where shall I analyse it? I'll have a column for van or motor vehicles. Two and a half thousand. So to appreciate, so far we've made no debits, no credits. All I'm doing is making a note of each transaction in one of these books. Uh, next, E. We buy more chairs, this time for $400 on credit. Well, if we buy anything on credit, we'll list it, if you remember, in the Purchases Journal or Purchase Day book. And here we've no need to have several columns because these are all going to be purchases on credit. Uh, but we just make a note. It was 400. It was Chris, which I can't spell. Again, sorry repeating, but there's no debit, no credit. Later, we'll, at the end of the month, then we'll come through uh, and do the debits, do the credits. F. We buy more chairs, 800, again from Chris, on credit. So, list it again, 800 bought from Chris. G, we buy chairs on credit from William. So, more purchases on credit, this time William, 600. H, we sold some chairs. 2,100 to add, on credit. If we sell on credit, obviously there's been no cash. We list it in the sales journal or the sales day book. 2 names, remember, for the same thing. Uh, what was it? It was 2,100. I'll make a note of who it was to, obviously. It was to Anne. Uh, that was H. Uh, I sold some chairs for 350 on credit to Edwina. So more sales on credit, this time Edwina. 350. J. Again, sale of chairs on credit, this time to Andrew. For 700. K. Rent for the month was paid of 300. Well, we've paid cash, so it'll be in the cash payments book. 300, a rent. And we'll need another column. We have a column for every type of payment. So I'll have a column headed up rent. 300. In practice, if you're doing things by hand, uh, these books, you can buy special books, but they're very long books because there'll be a column for every type of payment. And of course, there's lots of different reasons why you might be paying cash, you know, electricity, be a column, telephone, be a column, and so on. Anyway, let's carry on, where are we up to? Uh, K, J, K, L. Paid three quarters of the amount due to Chris. Well, we owe Chris money because We've been buying goods on credit, 
And of course, the total we owe to him, 400, 800, we owe a total of 1,200. And we pay three quarters of it. Presumably the rest of it we'll pay later. So how much are we going to pay him? Three quarters of 1,200 is 900. All right, that was just my workings. However, we paid 900 cash payments book. It was Chris. And which column will I put it in? Well, it's not purchases. We've not bought any more goods. Surely, when we buy goods, the double entry later is going to be debit purchases credit payables. If you pay uh, some money to Chris, credit cash debit payables. So we need a column for payables. 900. Received a thousand from Anne. Well, of course, Anne owes us money. We've been selling her goods on credit. She now pays us a thousand. So we receive a thousand cash, the double entry. Uh, sorry, not the double entry, I beg your pardon. No debits credits yet. The recording. We received cash, so a thousand. It's Anne. And what column? Remember, we haven't sold anymore. And was a receivable who's paid us money. Okay, we're nearly there. Or not, anyway. Uh, Patty. Patty paid another 4,000 of her own business into the business bank account. Well, again, we're doing the books of the business, so the business has received 4,000. And Patty, if you remember, is the owner. So this is more capital. We'll put 4,000 in the capital column. Uh, o. Chairs were purchased on credit from William and from Bertha. So if we buy on credit, it's the purchase journal or day book. William, a thousand. Bertha, 1600. P. Chairs were sold on credit to Tony, so sales on credit go in the sales journal or day book. Tony, 1350. And Q. Chairs were sold to George, again on credit, 2100. R, we paid wages of 400, so we've paid out cash, it goes in the cash payments book. And as always, we'll analyse, so we need a column now for wages. And finally, Patty withdrew 700 cash from the business bank account for herself. So it's cash out of the business, it's cash payments. Patty again was the owner. And remember, anything the owner takes is drawings or withdrawals. How much was it? 700. And there we are. I appreciate so far we've done no debits and no credits. But we have a record in these notebooks, a record of every transaction. We must make a record uh, the time the transaction occurs, you know, day by day. The double entry will deal with later, but so far, no debits, no credits. And I appreciate this is just a short example. In practice, during the month, there'll be thousands of payments, thousands of receipts. You know, um, rent. Maybe we've made several payments during the month. Well, fine. They'd all have gone to the rent column. Cash purchases, all to the cash purchases column, and so on. 
We've come to the end of the month. Uh, and the, as soon as we get to the end of the month, we add up all the columns. Uh, the cash payments book, the total, 6, 11, 14, 23, 27, 34, 3, 4, 6,400. And the analysis columns, here of course it's easy, there's only one entry in each, but again there could have been several in each column. But cash purchases, 1,600, motor vehicles, 2,500, 300. Fine. Similarly, cash receipts. Oh, beg your pardon. Cash receipts was up there. Uh, cash receipts. The total of the total column. Six, seven, eight. Twelve thousand two hundred. And the analysis. The total capital. Ten thousand. Cash sales. Twelve hundred. Receivables. A thousand. And of course, no problem here because it's a very short exercise, but there is a little check on ourselves. The total of these three columns, 10, 11, 2, 12, obviously should equal the total of the total column. What else? The purchase journal, the purchase daybook, the, the purchases on credit, the total there is 12, 18. Oh, we'll start again. 12, 18, 20. Four two eight four thousand four hundred, and the sales journal, the sales on credit, the total. All right, so there are what we call the books of prime entry. I said several times, there are effectively notebooks. There's no double entry. We'll worry about that shortly. But every transaction has been recorded in each, in one rather, of those four books. All right. We're going to do a lot more on this example, but um, to avoid it getting too long, I'll, put, uh, I'll stop this lecture here. The next lecture will carry on and see what else he's doing. But think about what I've said. I hope it's clear. If it isn't, then as always, obviously, look back through it uh, before you move on to the next one.